Hello, Conversation One students. It's Saturday, and uh, this is our makeup lecture, which will count as week number three. Um, tonight's lecture is brought to you by Hockey Night in Canada. That's why I'm wearing my <clears throat> Edmonton Oilers uh, Canadian hockey team hoodie. Yeah, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> there's no Hockey Night in Canada right now. Saturday night is when a lot of Canadians like to watch hockey, but the NHL season has been cancelled because of the coronavirus, which is sad for me because that's something that I enjoy watching, I, and I play hockey in my free time, but um, none of us can play sports right now because uh, that would mean we were too close to each other, so all professional sports have been stopped, and uh, amateur sports have been stopped too. So. I'm, this is why I'm wearing this uh, hockey gear today. I probably will never wear this in another class again, but it is Saturday night in Korea, so this is my hockey attire. Today's topic is actually has nothing to do with hockey um, or Canada. We're going to talk about vacations. Uh, I think it's a bit of an ironic topic currently because most people's vacations have been cancelled. If you made plans to go on vacation, you're probably looking to get your ticket refunded. I was supposed to go to Canada this summer. I hadn't booked my tickets yet, which was fortunate for me. Uh, but I think many of you international students can understand, or Korean students who are hoping to travel this summer, you probably aren't expecting or you shouldn't be expecting to do what you originally planned. Um, I also bought concert tickets for my birthday in July to see my favorite band Rage Against the Machine, but I imagine that's going to be cancelled as well. Nonetheless, we're going to talk about vacations today and uh, hope that soon uh, things will go back to normal and people will be able to fly and enjoy vacations, the type of vacations that they like again. As I said before, there is a side effect of all of this which is good for us which is basically that the earth is essentially getting a break from all our airplane traffic and um, all of our transportation in general so those of you who live with me in Korea all you have to do is look up at, at the night sky and see all the stars that I've never seen before honestly I came here in 2007 and I've never seen night sky as clear as it is now. Um, normally, at this time of year, we have yellow dust coming from China, which is a combination of um, deforested desert climate kicking up dust and sand, and uh, fine dust and smoke from factories mixing together and then floating over Korea. And so far, we have not had any of that yet. Um, I'm not saying we won't, because every spring I've seen the yellow dust um, coating the cars and the streets, but I'm hopeful that this we, this year we'll get a break. Um, so that is a benefit. Um, sometimes people travel a lot because they get something we call a travel bug, which is once you travel and you go to all these interesting places, you go to Europe, you go to Africa, you come to Korea or some other place in East Asia, um, Russia, whatever, North America, Machu Picchu in South America. I'm just picking random places that are famous to visit. But wherever you go around the world, you might experience things that you've never seen before and you might they might excite you and, and um, um, add something to your life and make you think differently and and uh, people find that attractive so they start to travel more and more we call this the travel bug not the travel virus I think the word virus is going to be unpopular for quite a long time now because of what's going on um, but a bug is essentially a disease and uh, it's not we don't call travel disease because bug is a more positive way of saying something that you catch and when you get it, 
um, you feel it and it's not supposed to be a disease it's it's just something that you sort of get addicted to so if you say if you hear somebody say I have the travel bug or or I caught the travel bug or something like that it just means that they're essentially addicted to traveling like traveling has become a, has infected them and they want to do it as much as possible uh, my brother is I think getting close to 50 countries that he's visited and he's younger than me I'm super jealous of that but that's um, a choice that I made um, to stay more local and travel less but uh, some people just um, that's one of the things that they want to do with their life is travel so <clears throat> we're taking a break from that but hopefully we'll get back to it at some point if you're like me and you end up being super busy and perhaps overtired you you may have uh, found out before that if you have a really um, tight schedule and you travel somewhere and you're very busy and very active um, vacations can also tire you out they sort of give you back your mental energy and they uh, they're they're good for stress relief but uh, if you do a vacation that involves a lot of activity hiking and long days and visiting a lot of things it can wear you out and by the time you come home you need another good expression that we use in English is uh, I need a vacation from my vacation which means I need to rest because my vacation wasn't very relaxing. Um, so that the, some people end up doing that. I'm that type of person. When I go on vacation, I try to do as much as possible because uh, my vacations are... I don't go on vacation very often. So when I do, I want to you know, have an action-packed adventure kind of thing. And sometimes I overdo it. My friends will be the first to tell you that's um, not not everybody's cup of tea uh, not everybody likes to be super active some people just like to read a book on the beach and have a good you know have good meals and be pampered and that's fine everybody's different uh, there is something as well if you have vacation but you don't travel and you just have a vacation and you stay home about 10 years ago uh, another Canadian guy I knew he um, had a week off and he just didn't want to go anywhere he just wanted to uh, not work essentially for a week so he just stayed at home and uh, he called it a staycation and I don't know if that's very popular to stay to say that anymore um, but you know it's a bit of a joke these days that you can say you're in isolation or you can say you're in quarantine or you're self-isolating or self-quarantining or you're you know social distancing but if you want to put a positive spin on it I guess I've been on a six-week staycation which means I'm at home with my family um, I am working so that I guess it doesn't really count but it kind of feels like a staycation in a way. Uh, I know a lot of teachers do this, Korean teachers do this too, is they just have kind of a week break <clears throat> between their, you know, uh, winter sessions or winter classes and uh, regular semester classes and they have, you know, education programs they have to attend so they just, you know, have a week and they could take off to another country or they could just have a break and um, chill a little bit at home and recover uh, and that's what some people do uh, Korean teachers tend to I think burn out because they uh, have really long hours and have a lot of preparation and it's quite demanding uh, the, the expectations that parents have and students have on the teachers here so uh, any any teacher can understand that but I think it's especially true in Korea now, um, in terms of what we want to talk about this week uh, and what I want you to do for your assignment, as usual, the, um, the, the topic is based on uh, the chapter uh, from our textbook, uh, Takeaway 2. And uh, there's lots of good stuff here. They've got pictures with um, descriptions that you need to match. So number two on page 14 is a great... Um, 
exercise to practice. They've got full sentences for you to identify. And then they have pictures, you know, they talk, they talk about Costa Rica and they talk about Paris. Um, it depends on what you're going for, where you would go. If you were going to Costa Rica, I think you'd be more interested in nature and, um, you know, getting away from civilization a little bit more um, and um, experiencing the natural environment, a relaxing, secluded type thing that wasn't very busy, right? There's not going to be a whole lot of action going on. Um, people go down to Costa Rica because they like to surf and because they like, they're kind of interested in camping and backpacking and um, qu quiet, you know, getting away from other people uh, kind of behavior. I, I have friends who have visited Costa Rica and they, they say it's a very beautiful, natural environment down there. So, you know, you've got the ocean in front of you and the beaches and the beautiful fresh air, the beautiful view in the fresh air, and behind you, you have, you know, jungle, as far as you can see. Um, in contrast, some place like you would visit, like Paris, France, Paris, as they say in, in they like to say in Korea and France, we always just say, the American way is Paris. Um, Paris, France has all kinds of cultural things you can see. A civilization that goes back hundreds of years. So they have all kinds of art and monuments. Everybody knows the Louvre and everybody wants to see the Mona Lisa and go up the Eiffel Tower and have a, have a coffee on you know, an, a patio on a French cafe, drink some wine take a boat ride down the Seine. There's all kinds of things and there's people everywhere. Um, and you get to experience, you know, French high culture if you go there. Uh, that's a totally different experience. It's obviously um, up to a person's um, point of view to their preference, whether they would rather go to Paris or they would rather go to Costa Rica, a completely different environment. And you can like both. Um, but the question that I want to ask you is, uh, I'm going to frame this as a, you know, kind of versus debate type situation is, you have a choice. We're going to do a comparison. I want you to choose whether you want the Paris type vacation, which we'll call a tourist. If you want to be a tourist and, and, um, you enjoy tourism, then you fit that type. And uh, if you want to travel and be a traveler, which means being more self-reliant and more independent, uh, then you want the Costa Rica situation, okay? So I want you to make a choice. I know most people like both, uh, and it's hard to choose, but I want you to choose. And you may, in real life, let's be honest, you can go to France and you can have, a, you can do backpacking and you can go off by yourself and do your own thing. And you can avoid all the tourist traps and, and uh, experience France in a more intimate, intimate way, the way a traveler would. But just for the sake of argument, we'll say that Paris is more of a tourist type destination, whereas a place that has less people and less of these uh, businesses and uh, developed tourist industry and infrastructure would cater more to the traveler type. So even though you might want to mix these two together, um, and that's fine, I want you to say which one is, if you have to choose one or the other, go extreme. Go to the jungle in Costa Rica or go downtown Paris. Those are the two choices. Which one are you going to choose? Maybe it's a tough decision, but do it. This is the exercise I want you to do. Um, so when you're considering, you just like the job thing, um, that we did. Uh, this class, yeah, the first chapter was about jobs. You had to sort of, I wanted you to decide which job was good for you based on the criteria. I gave you a list of different things. How can you judge whether a job is good for you? Well, take a look at the criteria and then rate them. And then if you give high scores for the criteria that you like, then that's going to be a job that's better for you in general, right? And um, if you focus on the things that you are 
uh, you feel are important, then you're probably going to be happier with your job, whether you know exactly what you're going to do or not. It doesn't matter. Um, if you have that ability to to judge uh, what's important to you, then even if you're not sure exactly what you want to do, you don't have a particular job in mind, then it's easier for you to find a job that matches uh, your lifestyle and your personality. So in a, in a similar way, uh, I want you to think about these two choices and look at the criteria and think about what is more important. So if, if comfort is important to you and, you know, um, lo you know, location and lodging where you stay is, is important. And in terms of its comfort, uh, its convenience and its comfort, you're going to, you're going to want to stay in a five star hotel with a king size bed and, uh, all the amenities, uh, the chocolate on the pillow and the, the big screen TV. And, uh, I don't know the jacuzzi in the corner, all the things that, um, the uh, royal suite has to offer it's going to cost you a lot more money though and so that's something you have to consider too but just in terms of is this going to be a really luxurious convenient comfortable vacation if you answer yes then you're going to paris and you're staying at the ritz in a five-star hotel and if that doesn't matter to you but uh cost is important to you and um the environment being more natural and uh, being away from the hustle and bustle of civilization is more important to you, uh, that's the most important thing, then you're going to want to do some sort of camping or adventure or, you know, a remote kind of vacation. Go somewhere where there's a low population and not very many people around, uh, which would be more towards the Costa Rica type. Um, <clears throat> other things that you might consider, safety. If you're a tourist, you might uh, purchase a, use a travel agency and go in a group. So there's going to be a hundred people and a bunch of buses and they drive you around and that's safer. Uh, if you go alone and it's just you taking care of yourself, uh, you're more likely to be, you know, in worst case scenario, attacked by somebody. Somebody's going to try and steal your money or you know, uh, trick you or, or take advantage of you. Um, so obviously safety, if that's a, it's a big concern, then being a tourist is better. You're going to be in crowded places with lots of people. And generally that's going to be more safe, safe. That's going to be safer rather than uh, going off on your own. Uh, then again, if you really value freedom, and you don't want your entire day. I've done the package tour before. I went to Beijing in 2011, I think. Right after the Beijing Olympics, because I saw the, all the facilities for the, Olymp the Winter Olympics there. I guess it was 2009. Yeah, it must have been 2009, because the Olympics were in 2008. So a long time ago, I went to Beijing. Uh, I was only there for four days, but oh my God, we did so much, so many things. We went to so many different places and it was like the bus took us somewhere and we were there for an hour and they, they had a guide take us all the way through and then there was a souvenir shop and they went to the next place and they went all through the you know, Forbidden City or whatever, or the Great Wall or whatever. Go around for an hour and then meet back at the bus and uh, go through the souvenir shop buy some souvenirs if you wanted, and then back on the bus, and then lunch, and then, you know, and that's the way it was for the four days. It was, uh, the price was pretty reasonable. Part of the reason was they, I think they were hoping that you would buy a lot of stuff and bring it home, and I did. So they were right. But um, you can normally save, save money in a variety of ways. Sometimes the package is cheap, uh, but generally, if you're really just going staying in in a simple accommodation uh, accommodation if you're if you're lodging your accommodation is really simple like staying in a hostel which uh, with a bunch of other backpackers you're going to spend less and if you go to you know local uh, restaurants 
and you eat locally, you get the advantage of um, eating more um, authentic. What it's not necessarily authentic, but you're gonna eat food that the people the people that live there eat, not pe food that's specially prepared for people that are coming from abroad um, and is designed essentially to satisfy foreigners. If you want to have the real food, you know, you don't come to Korea and eat the hotel buffet um, in the Shilla Hotel or the Walker Hill or, or the Sheridan or whatever. If you want uh, to eat real Korean food, then you go out of the hotel and down down the street for a few blocks and you find a local kimchi jjigae or samgyeopsal place and then you eat what the food that everybody eats on a day-to-day -day basis and that's totally different you know this same thing in canada if you want to eat what canadians eat every day you can't just uh, go to a fancy restaurant in downtown toronto and that's not what people eat normally that's what, only what they eat when they go out and they're spending a lot of money so if you want to experience the culture more intimately the tourist group is not the best way. Uh, the best way is to go off on your own. So think about all these things. Transportation, what you're gonna see, how you're going to experience it, accommodation, cost, comfort, safety, freedom, scheduling, all of these things. Think of these factors. They're all criteria that you can judge and uh, look at them and when you make your judgments one side or the other, then Basically, emphasize the things that are important to you and uh, decide whether you're the tourist type or you're the traveler type. So answer this question. Say, I'm, I prefer traveling because two or three things. And if you want to give it, like I said, it's always a good idea to give an example. Uh, I just gave an example. I just, I just said Beijing. Uh, I did that. That wasn't my favorite way of doing it. So... Um, I may do that again for certain reasons, but I prefer to book my own trip. Uh, I went to Vietnam last year, and uh, although I didn't do a very good job of, you know, booking everything and making it cheap, I booked the hotel, I booked the flights, I, every day we ate around local places or in the hotel, whatever we wanted to do, our schedule was open, and we, we went to, uh, we were in Da Nang, and we went to Bana Hills one day, and that was a day trip, and we went to the beach another day. And that was not, that was just, um, if we wanted to do it, that was my idea, this day we're gonna do this, this day we're gonna do this. I had a plan, but I made the plan, and I could cancel it, or I could change it, or I could do it uh, according to what um, me and my family were interested in on that day. So that flexibility is, really important to me. I like to do a lot of stuff, but I like to do the things that I choose, uh, not what everybody else wants to do too. Okay, so this is what I want you to explain to me. Um, choose one of the two, tourist or traveler. Um, pick some criteria that are important to you. Explain that these are important and why they're important to you. Then uh, maybe describe an example. If you don't have, if you haven't traveled very much, that's fine. Use your imagination. Um, tell me wh where you want to go or where, where you will if you have a plan. Uh, whether it's canceled or it's delayed or it'll happen this summer because everything will be better by summer. Let's hope that's what happens and uh, life can move on. So think about what you're interested in. If you have an experience already, you can talk about it in the past tense. And if you're thinking about something that you could do, then you use the conditional. Right? If I went here, I would, if I had a choice to go on a vacation, I think I would be the traveler type and I would go backpacking in South America. Colombia? Brazil? I don't know. Romania? Doesn't matter. Or the opposite. I prefer something super fancy and, uh, comfortable so I'm going to I'm going to fly to Dubai and stay in a super fancy seven-star hotel that looks like a gigantic stale, uh, gigantic sale and it's, uh, it's um, 
sits on an island, a man-made island, uh, in a bay with um, $100 coffees uh, just because. You know, it's, it's up to you. Again, remember, I, and I say this in the summary, I believe, is uh, you have to be organized. Uh, you have to construct good sentences. Um, show me that you uh, have a good vocabulary and you can use words that um, convey the meaning um, effectively to me. And uh, obviously grammar is important. All these things need to be in balance. But basically, um, make your statement, uh, your judgment, make your statement. Uh, give a few uh, things that you feel are priorities to back yourself up, to, to explain why you made the choice. And then give an example. Um, it should be half a page long, just like the other assignments. And this one is due uh, along with the week two lecture and assignments that was related to jobs. Both of them are due by Tuesday. Okay, so you have until Tuesday to do this. Remember that the cyber lecture period ends Sunday night, but your homework is still, you can still, hand, you can still send your homework until Tuesday. Okay, so um, that's my explanation for Great Vacations, the topic this week. Uh, have a good weekend. Sorry for the delay. This was supposed to be uploaded this morning, but uh, I am behind. I'm almost caught up though, so I expect things to be delivered earlier in the future. Thank you for listening. Have a good night.